What's up guys and welcome back to the Battle of Central Europe where we are going to have one of the last games of the day, Denial Esports, going up against Aftershock Gaming. Game 2 in the best of 2 where Aftershock lead the series 1-0. Here on Heffel TV Hitbox 1, we're going to be bringing you the two remaining games, My Insanity vs. Denial, going to be following straight after guys. I'm Mike Loris, I've been joined by Grandis and I will be continue to be joined by Grandis for the rest of the games and... I'm I'm always hoping that we have fewer pauses and fewer delays, but it seems like it's going the opposite direction, man. Yeah, especially after that last game. We disconnected from the server and we had a remake for like two minutes. It probably took 15 minutes to get all set up, but we're going to be in this game number two. And it is going to be one of the last games of the day. The last game of the day is going to be Denal versus Mind Sandy after this series concludes. As far as the bands in the early picks, we have Razor Viper. I, as well as Batrider taken out in the first stage, exactly the same as last game. But as for the picks, Brewmaster first pick by Denial, followed up by an Ancient Apparition for them. And Aftershock get their hands on the Tidehunter Death Prophet. And Death Prophet last game was such a huge driving force for Aftershock. I mean, that and Jalopy's Necrophos were absolutely dominating Denial for the greater part of the game. So Death Prophet Tidehunter, a really solid opening for Aftershock. This time they will not be able to straight up push Denial, at least not as hard as Jakiro is going to be banned out, but it's certainly a very strong start for Aftershock and for Denial. The Brewmaster did some pretty good work in the last game. This time they're going to highly prioritize the Ancient Apparition. It's going to end up working pretty well against the Death Prophet. Yeah, we'll just have to see how that's going to pan out in the game. Um, we're going to see Jakiro as well as Spectre and Necrophos taken out in the next phase of the game. Aftershock using the Necrophos to great effect in the first game of this series are going to respect that hero's potential. And I definitely think he deserves that ban. He just changes the game in a way where he's incredibly annoying to play against, especially when games tend to go later. All right, Spectre going to take the boot out, Necrophos out, as you said. And, I mean, Aftershock, they're going to be forced into playing a very much so different type of draft as they, uh, well, have most of the heroes banned out from they previously used. But still, we got the Batrider and the Io banned out. So, Denial, maybe they're going to fall back into their more Denial-esque heroes in the Venomancer or the Beastmaster. It seemed like they just I mean, they had so much reliance in the last game over their ultimates. This game, it's going to be a little bit more of aftershock with that pressure on them because they have the exorcism and the ravage but uh who knows it's going to be once again be a tusk i mean the tusk early on wasn't that great late game we saw the usage of the sigil that was absolutely crippling to denial but it didn't seem like it was the most fantastic support pick maybe it's a dazzle to come again it did turn one key fight, however, up against that Tidehunter Ravage. Um, when they all got five-man Ravage, that snowball was very important. So, I don't know, maybe they're just looking to save somebody from HF Apparition Ice Boss or a Brewmaster to jump in. It definitely has its uses, but this game I'd like to see them play a little bit more aggressively and maybe pick up uh, something that will benefit more from that snowball repositioning um, in order to get some kills. We'll just have to see how Aftershock Gaming are going to play with it this time around. I still think he's worth the pickup, but Mm, maybe not yet. Maybe wait until later on in the draft. It certainly wasn't threatening enough for Denial to consider banning it out. Maybe if you really choreograph the fact that you're going to want to pick up another defensive support here, then the Tusk ban is worthy for Denial's last spot. But aside from that, Denial, they're going to pick up the traditionally more powerful support hero in the Ogre Magi to partner up with the Ancient Apparition. That is a hell of a lot of damage. And, and Ogre Magi is actually pretty good at uh, using that chilling touch as well, especially if he opens up with boots and or orb of venom as uh, some of his starting items. Scarath Mage is going to be the pick for Aftershock, however, so it's going to be a nice mix of offensive and defensive now from Aftershock instead of just going pure defensive with the snowball. Yeah, Scarath Mage is one of the heroes that you very rarely want to snowball in, and more often than not, that's going to end up killing the Scarath Mage than helping him do damage. Um, but still, Snowball, just as a stun offering to set up for some Arcane Bolts and maybe some aggressive roaming that way, um, is going to give them that nice mix of defensive as well as aggressive potential, as you said. And it's also going to be nice up against the Brewmaster. A uh, fairly common counter pick, so to speak, and it's just going to give them some more lockdown for him, which is much needed. Denial Esports Doom pick, however, I think is a little bit questionable. It's going to be really nice to stop the Tidehunter to get his Ravage off. But once Ravage and Exorcism have already been spent, most of these heroes don't care much about being doomed. Um, at least they don't rely as heavily on constantly spamming out their skills. His Death Prop will still be able to do damage. 
Assuming he, she, of course, gets her ultimate off first. Doom is most likely going to be the hardest hitting versus the Tide Hunter because, I mean, you can get the Ravage off beforehand, although that seems unlikely when you have a blinking Doom uh, on the other end. Uh, Aftershock, they have, you know, as you said, heroes that don't really mind being doomed that much. And I honestly don't really know how I feel about this hero anymore. It's He's perfectly fine at shutting down that one target, and up against Tide is fine, but it's pretty much only up against Tide is the... Doom percentage chance of working versus Death Prophet is kind of a coin flip. So, yeah, I don't know about that for Denial. Regardless, what's done is done. They're going to have two melee cores so far. And Aftershock, they have a Tide Hunter already in their lineup. So he's going to be pretty happy about that. Sniper being banned out from Denial, or by Denial, rather, which is, I suppose, a pick that Aftershock could have potentially made. But I think the Puck banned from Aftershock, just a little bit more standard. Yeah, even though they're potentially looking for a safe laner, I think there are other heroes that would be a lot scarier than that sniper. They have a decent team at getting in the sniper's face with a Blink Brewmaster as well as the Doom. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not sure about that ban. As for Aftershock, it's going to be a Mirana for them. It can be a decent right-clicking carry, but more than anything, it's going to be there for the arrows. And they don't have the greatest setup for it, but if you're able to line up the Test Snowball into the arrow, that can work out wonderfully but denial they're gonna go for the zeus and actually this might work out for them yeah i really like this first of all at the very least it's denial switching it up and they're kind of forced to because aftershock have been banning out the very uh the heroes that are that denial are comfortable with so i like this pickup in that sense but also i mean you're talking about going up against a cormorana a scarath mage a tusk these heroes are generally not that tanky and in a zeus versus death prophet matchup it's certainly not the best for Zeus, as he, his attack range, his animation, his damage all pretty much suck completely when you compare it to the Death Prophet, but it's not going to be the absolute worst because he does have Ogre Magi, Ancient Apparition to potentially rotate into his lanes, or it's just going to be Brewmaster in the mid lane, in which case it's going to be relatively similar. But yeah, I think the Zeus is actually a decent pick here. Of course, he could be better. I mean, Aftershock have the Death Prophet and the Tide Hunter, who are generally pretty tanky, so as far as that is concerned, not the best pickup, but. I could see the Zeus getting quite a bit done. Yeah. As far as the players and what they're playing on, Jarrell is going to be on that Zeus for Denial on the dire side of the map with Paris playing the safe lane farming Doom, supported by Effing Mad on the Ancient Apparition and Cryo J on the Ogre. Towards mid lane, it looks like we are going to have that Zeus just based on Jarrell's loadout um, and down in bottom. Funzi is going to be taking up the Brewmaster. And on the Aftershock side, we got Jalopi playing the Marana Core. Supporting him is going to be the Scarth Mage, going to be handled by Zeroji, and the Tusk, once again, going to be handled by Magoma. That leaves the final two cores for Aftershock, my control, once again, on the DP, and Tidehunter is going to be played by Kefka, and he is going to be going up against what looks like to be a Doom Ogre AA tri-lane. It's seconds, deadly for sure, but it could certainly be a lot worse. Yeah. Oh, no, we'll, we'll just have to see how much Kefka is able to get out of this lane the mid lane matchup, as you said, is also going to be fairly favored towards Aftershock. Just Death Prophet should be able to have this on lockdown. Although Zeus will be able to get some CS with the Chain Lightning, that's pretty much the only CS he's going to be seeing. And it's unlikely he's going to deny anything away from the Death Prophet for the longest portion of this game. Maybe one or two here and there, but nothing too significant. And bottom lane also should be pretty good for Aftershock. They've set themselves up to pretty much win all three of these lanes, or at the very least, get something out of it. Kefka is not going to win his lane, but he's still going to be able to get up to Ravage. Yeah, and Mind Control even opening up with a Magic Stick, getting a perfect read on what Denial have. There is always a possibility of seeing a Brewmaster on the other end of the lane, but he knows it's going to be up against Zeus. Unfortunately, the block isn't quite as good as Jorals, so getting an early first blood with the help of Magoma is going to be a little bit less likely. However, if Jorals steps up a little bit more, don't go up there, Jorral. That could be a very easy first blood. Death Prophet kind of playing this aggressively, though, so this is kind of clear that this is happening, but you know, Magoma looks like he will back off. If the block for Mind Control was just a little bit better, that could have very easily led to first blood being drawn by the Aftershock side, but instead, Invisru not really going to be doing too much. Regardless, Death Prophet should have a decent time over towards mid and oh, the laning stage for denial is going to definitely not be as you know as safe for uh, as when oh my god it's getting late <laughs> it's the laning stage for denial is definitely not going to be as secure as that of aftershocks but at the same time they have ogre magi ancient apparition and these two heroes can roam around pretty much wherever they want and get kills very easily yeah and if they want this Zeus to win his lane i think that's going to be 
their burden to carry throughout all of this. However, um, currently it's just zoning duties up in top lane, as well as running some pulls here or there from the Ogre Magi in order to get some experience. And Kefka is zoned out fairly effectively. He starts out with boots first, not a whole lot of regen to his name, so he can't trade that um, well. And he's going to sit on the two-minute rune, but that's about all that he can do. He's also going to get a stack while he's at it, so he'll make good use of his time. Kefka's not going to be able to farm this for quite some time. His impact in this game is going to be delayed. Hmm... Yeah, Aftershock down in the bottom, <clears throat> they have sent the Brewmaster as their offlane hero, and he's managed to find his level 2 faster than the Tide Hunter, but unlike the Tide, he has no such uh, backup plan like those Ancients to farm up. So Brewmaster, all he's getting out of this lane is pretty much all he's going to get. Kefka gets the Bounty Rune, no Fire Blast thrown his way by the Ogre. Yeah, Brewmaster, when you compare him to a Tide Hunter in their respective offlanes, is very similar, except for the fact that Tide Hunter, you can slow down, you can very rarely shut down, Brewmaster is the type of hero that you can absolutely make him have zero impact in the game if you keep him out of experience range, because he doesn't really have any great ways of recovering, jungling, and Brewmaster possible, but not till a little bit later on. And if he dies a couple times in this bottom lane, then Funzi can literally be doing nothing for his team. It's quite a long ways away until we see something like that, but it's certainly very possible, especially since Funzi is now in a corner, blocked out by a couple of illusions. Has to run the other way, but Jalopi's in the other way. Funzi's going to try to crash through these illusions, but now he has to crash through both a Tusk and a Skyrath Mage. Funzi's in a corner, literally cannot go anywhere. Arrow is... How is that arrow missing? I don't know. But Zeroji's going to draw first blood anyway. Funzi, I mean, he got cornered. Literally got cornered and could not go anywhere. Yeah, it's a really risky place to be caught out as an offlaner, and you kind of have to use that path in order to have access to the side shop, so as kind of expected, Brewmaster's not going to have a good time. If that happens once or twice more, Funzi is going to be completely shut down. Although, um, there's still a chance that he'll be able to get something out of this lane. Brewmaster, this is not going to be the scariest of brews that you've ever seen. The Blink Dagger is going to be a distant dream for Funzi, and even just getting that split is going to be heavily delayed. Draw in mid, 18-1 compared to 22 and one of the Death Prophet. This Zeus is doing a little bit better than I expected him to. It is having a fine time. Kefka has abandoned his top lane, but this is something Tidehunter can do. With the Anchor Spash jungling, it's not the fastest by any means, but it's doable. And even though he lets Doom free farm, a free farming Doom isn't the most scariest hero in the game. Like, I'd be a lot more scared of a Medusa or a Naga Siren getting the same, a similar amount of farm as... Doom generally wants to be a little bit more active. It is possible that he's going to go for a Hand of Midas, and given how bad the Brewmaster is getting beat in the bottom lane, a Hand of Midas won't be the most terrible of items, since he is getting so much gold guaranteed by the Devour, and he's holding on to quite a bit of cash right now. He might be going for that, but Funzi, oh. speaking of bad times, is once again going to be jumped upon. Arrow is once again going to miss, but Funzi actually has nowhere to go. He has a TP this time, but it's certainly not going to be happening. This time it's Magoma to take the kill. Jalopy kind of receiving the short end of the straw, but... That's fine. Marana's getting a lot of farm regardless. It's 2-0 ni oh now in favor of the bottom lane of Aftershock. Yeah, those test snowballs when you're hasted are pretty ridiculous. And Goma came in just too fast for Brewmaster to do anything. And just like that, this Brew is pretty much out of this game. And he's going to be relying on the rest of his teammates to find some pickoffs that he can soak experience from in order to get anything out of this early stage. He's going to try blocking his creeps as best he can, but he has no uh, reset like the Radiant offlane does, where you can pull over to the um, side camp and get some experience under your tower. Brewmaster is pretty much just hosed. He'll get his level 3 after like one creep, and he should be able to see that under tower, but if he walks in front of his tower, even eats an arrow behind his tower, he is going to fall. And it looks like Brewmaster, even though it's not the best option for him, is going to try to get as much farm as possible out of his jungle. So what do you think about this boot choice from the Death Prophet? This is probably one of the more infrequently seen boot choices for the Death Prophet, and it could work out sometimes. Oh my god, they get a perfect cage on Joral. It literally does not get better than that, except for the fact that Funzi is here. That additional slow is a little bit too much for them to take, but... Still a nice ice shard thrown, but yeah. What do you think about this Tranquil Boot pickup from the Death Prophet? I'm not a huge fan of it, but then again, it is going to make sure that the harass coming out from Zeus's constant spam of the Chain Lightning isn't going to stick very heavily onto the DP. I still think Phase Boots is a quote-unquote better choice. It's also going to help her roam around the map a little bit better, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's unconventional. I can see why you'd get it, but I think that uh, the Phase Boots outclass them. Well, Zeroji is going to snag a bounty rune and be in a little bit of trouble, but he will be just fine. Yeah, I think phase boots, especially when you have a bottle, is going to be fine. He also got an extremely fast stick, so it's not like he was taking that much heat from the Zeus, as Drow was mostly just poking at him with arc lightning, and that was very occasional as well. So, 
maybe Mind Control is go just going to go for a standard build off of this. Uh, I really can't see him going for anything too out of the ordinary. You generally can progress uh, pretty normally after going for Tranquil Boots early on. Extra regen, never really a bad thing. And now Mind Control, he's hit the level 7 mark. He actually does have 3 points in the Witchcraft right now, so his pushing is going to be fairly strong, but I don't know if this is going to be the game where they are going to be fully committed into the pushing. Aftershock, they have a very... Uh, they have a much more team fight heavy lineup than compared to the last game. So, at Mind Control is certainly going to be looking for these pickoffs, but not going to find anyone in the bottom lane. Might decide to use the Exorcism regardless, but it's not exactly a necessity this game. Yeah. The Ancient Stack, it's not going to be increased any larger for the Tide Hunter, but it is a triple form, so that is going to be quite a bit of experience. But even though he hasn't died, the Titans are still not getting very much, and he might die here. He is going to be uh, cold feeded down. It is going to proc, and with the uh, chilling touch damage, it might be enough to kill off Kafka, even with that anchor smash. Ogre Magi is able to bash him down with his club. Yeah, Titans are not having a very good time either, and both of them are, both of the offlaners, I should say, are not doing very well at all. That's two points in cold feet, and that's something that you can actually go for when you have an Ogre Magi stun to set things up. You cold feet, then fire blast. Nine times out of ten, you will be able to freeze the target in place. So they get the kill on the Tide Hunter, which is certainly very nice, but they end up losing a bottom lane tier one tower in exchange. This is actually going to be okay for Denial, since Funzi is going to be a lot safer. But uh, that's working under the assumption that Aftershock are going to leave him alone. That's certainly not going to be the case, because still the Tusk is here, and the Marana is here as well. She has two points in arrow, will throw it, will connect squarely onto the Brewmaster's face, and now he's going to get put into a cage with the Ice Shards. Has a TP out, but he's not going to be able to use it. Snowball is going to kill him off in the end. This time the Tusk is going to be going for a more damage-heavy build, not maxing out the Sigil, or not prioritizing the Sigil, rather, instead going for pure damage, and... Uh, it's going to be even better this game than the last, because really Denial don't have any real right clickers. Yeah, they really don't. Eventually, the um, Sigil's going to be annoying for the Brulings, and maybe Doom picks up some more items, gets that Alpha Wolf uh, to do some right click damage of his own. But yeah, I do like the build choice coming out from the Tusk, and Magoma, he's really been able to utilize those Ice Shards effectively. That's been two really nice blocks um, that he's found. You can use it kind of like an Earthshaker Fissure. It's a little bit harder to line up, and... I don't know, props to him. It's a fissure that bends, and sometimes if you're in the right angle, it's going to be better. Sometimes it's not going to be doing jack at all, but uh, so far they've been pretty good. And maybe Magoma can show a couple more of those off. Last game we didn't really see that many attempts at Ice Shards, just because he didn't have the support cast to back him up, but this game it's definitely going to be a lot different. So we saw a defensive Tusk last game, going to be seeing an offensive Tusk this game, and it looks like it's going to shine up on top, where Aftershock, they're getting pushed. However, they're going to open up with an arrow onto Cryo J, and this ogre is very quickly going to take a fall. Magoma also teleporting in. Aisha is going to block them off. Now the snowball forward onto Paris. It's going to be him and fucking Mad on the run. It looks like the ancient apparition is doomed to fall, and the doom is also going to take quite a bit of damage. Crypt Swarm will miss. The bolt will not quite do it, but Zoroji has another one, and now Paris is going to die. Oh, wait, wait. Now he's going to die. That's a whole bunch of kills going for Aftershock up on the top lane, even without a Ravage. Which is impressive. Ravage is still not available for Kefka. Didn't get level 6 off of that engagement, but that's coming shortly. With Exorcism, it's only level 1, but with Maxed Out Witchcraft, it's still doing a pretty hefty sum of damage. This tier 1 tower, it's going to be Aftershock coming ahead in pretty much every metric in that last fight. They're going to find a lot of kills, and the only saving grace for Denial is that beforehand their doom was unpunished for his fairly greedy build and going for the Midas, as well as mostly maxing Devour. Now that can't be um, said anymore. Aftershock, they're just looking really strong. And with the secondary smoke, it looks like we're going to see another jump. And that jump might find themselves an ogre, and it might find themselves a zoo. So let's see who's going to eat the end of the snowball. Oh no, someone's going to get on the receiving end of a very fast one. Gotta run, Cryo J, but he's not going to be able to run fast enough. There is a Doom being thrown onto the Tide, but he doesn't have a Ravage, so that's not really too relevant. The Sigil is also going to be slowing down Funzi and Paris as they try to charge forward for Mind Control. A net from the Doom might be enough to kill off this Death Prophet, but she is pretty darn quick, and it looks like she will be able to escape. Gerald not with enough mana to use his ultimate, and Mind Control with an Urn and a straight TP back to base is going to be A-OK. -okay. Aftershock, they get in, and, well, they actually force out the ultimate from the Doom after getting a kill on the Ogre Magi. Yet another nice little win for them, and this aggressive Tusk, I mean, it's like night and day between this game and the last game. Both were effective, but this one is a lot flashier, and it's certainly a lot more entertaining to see.
Definitely. You can pretty much snowball everybody but the Skyrath Mage in. That's what they've been doing time and time again. The damage is extremely strong uh, when you have those extra peoples inside the snowball. The bonus damage is currently only 30 plus every ally. Um, but yeah, that thing hits very hard. And now with an urn on the tusk, Aftershock, or uh, rather Magoma, is going to be highly prioritizing those aggressive items and putting them to use. Now we have level 6 on the tusk, and the lockdown is going to be even stronger um, against them, even through Black King Bars, which might eventually come out for the Brewmaster and the Doom. Brew does have his split as well, even before Titan Drive has, has his Ravage, which is fairly surprising to me. Um, but that's going to be remedied after one more camp is cleared out by Kefka. And we also have to remember that Aftershock have two silences to work with, or eventually two silences to work with, the Death Prophet and the Skywrath Mage. Uh, the Titan is going to have his Ravage soon. In fact, he has it right now if he wants to. And ordinarily, you would want to have a Blink Dagger on your Tidehunter, but you don't really need a Blink Dagger when you have a Snowball. It's the jankiest of combos, but it ends up working, you know, eight times out of ten. And it's certainly glorious when it does. So Aftershock, they have an Exorcism available, Death Prophet level nine. They're going to try to take down this tower. Denial, they have... Pretty much everything that they could possibly want right now to try to defend, but still Exorcism is going to be spent. Cryo, gonna jump forward for a Fire Blast on the Death Prophet, won't really be doing that much. Ice Blast is also going to fly through, will connect only onto the DP, however, it won't really be too relevant. Again, Aftershock, they're not gonna make this push happen really strongly, but now they have actually everyone in this mid lane. Jalopi with the drums and the Ring of Aquila, and now a fresh Yule Scepter on mind control. This push is gonna be extremely slow because Exorcism, for the most part, did not hit the tower, and they don't have a Jakiro behind this like last game, but still they're going to try to go for it, force out the fortification. Magoma is on the front lines looking for something. He might end up going to a Brewmaster. He's going to split prematurely up on the high ground. Now trying to charge forward, trying to go for Zoroji. It's going to be the Snowball protecting the Tusk for now, but Zoroji is going to get a lot of backup from the Ravage, and the Snowball is going to be stunning everyone as well. Magoma might be paying the price for this one as he gets hit with Lightning Bolt, now traps himself inside the cage with Paris. It's so far just a single kill. Four denials that do charge forward, looking for a little bit more. Jalopy might shatter to this one. It's going to be very close. He will shatter. Now the Doom onto Kefka. A little bit too late, however. Regardless, it's still going to be three kills in favor of Denial, with Zeus doing most of the damage. And this is where Zeus is at his most threatening. When you're trying to fight him 13 minutes into the game, he's going to be messing you up, almost guaranteed. That's going to be a 3 for 0 in favor of Denial. Yeah, and finally they're able to put together this combination, and even though Jarrell hasn't had the greatest of starts, now with the Blink Dagger, as well as being 1-0 and 2, having some decent CS, Jarrell is one of the scariest heroes on the side of Denial, and they need to respect that. This game definitely feels like they need a pipe for it. They're going to throw an arrow mid, but that's going to completely miss, as Blink Away from Jarrell is going to keep himself safe. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, they kind of need a pipe. In Shepard and Zeus on their own almost make you want to build that item and together it's mandatory yeah and it's going to be most likely tidehunter to eventually pick that one up but blink dagger is probably holding a little bit more priority for him so he has different ideas in mind that being said denial they still are working without a split right now and it is possible for aftershock to try to go for this tower again but death prophet's their only pusher right now and aftershock they use their ravage almost purely defensively it is always going to be less than ideal whenever you do that and well that time was no exception if they actually had something to put into a ravage once he actually used it or if they had initiation on their own terms then things could have gone very differently for aftershock there but for right now they've gone for all these cost effective fighting builds and if they're not winning the fights then then is really going to regret buying these drums maybe instead she's going to be wishing she had a midas yeah and i don't really see a clean way they can get a fight on their terms um, unless they get a nice initiation. That time it just didn't happen. They used Ravage mostly defensively. Tusk was caught out alone, and <clears throat> that's probably going to maintain the case for quite a long time inside this game. A Blink Ravage is nice, but it's still quite a ways away for Kefka to have that completed. I suppose after he finishes this Ancient stack, he'll be close. Um, these are all large creeps, so will actually be dangerously close to having that finished. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same farm that the Brewmaster has. And after Brew's start... It's not all that great for Tidehunter. Exorcism is off of cooldown, as are all of the other ultimates for Aftershock, so maybe they're going to try to force an issue, but the tier 1 tower down and bottom as well as top, which are the easiest to push, have already been taken. They're probably going to go down mid again. But they're going to have to wait for bottom lane because Zeroji is going to get struck by lightning. We'll drop a Mystic Flare onto Jeral, dropping him very low, but it's not going to be lethal. Jeral is going to limp away from that situation with his life. He has an incredibly early Blink Dagger 
on Zeus, and it's not really for initiating large-scale fights, it's for getting those solo pickoffs, just as we saw on the Scarath Mage. He's going to also do that versus Marana and versus the Tusk, but it's going to be a top lane where they're going to set up for silence onto Funzi. He's going to get Walrus punched instead, and now he's silenced, but he has a chance for a split because they can't... Oh no, they actually kill him within the split animation. That was pretty much as close as it gets. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunate for the Brewmaster who didn't get a dodge coming out from the Drunken Brawler there. And one more auto attack for Mind Control is going to do him in. Could have been a pretty important turn, but also I don't think he's going to be heartbroken that he missed that split. He's not doing very well in this game. And using a split defensively when you're already behind as a Brewmaster is never a great position to be in. So um, it is a victory for A-Shock, but not a huge victory at that. They're going to put a little bit of pressure on this Tier 2 Tower up top, but not that much at all. Death Prophet now has the hood, and she's the one to build up the pipe for her team, and I think this is an okay choice for them, as Tidehunter isn't close enough to having that completed, and Mind Control will be able to get it that much faster, and I think this is the best way that they'll be able to guarantee, or at least have a better chance at winning these team fights. Yeah, I don't really mind this that much. I mean, Death Prophet can get bulk. I mean, that's usually her build, get bulky, and in this particular game, that means get magic resistance for yourself, and if you get it for the team, then that's just golden, so... Death Prophet is going to use her farm in order to get that item up for herself, and that's going to give Tidehunter a little bit more freedom. He does have his Blink Dagger completed. Now can maybe look for something a little bit more defensive for the team, something around the lines of an aura, but if he's not going to go for a pipe, I don't think Aftershock have a mech, and no, they don't. Maybe it's going to be a late mech for the Tidehunter. Options for Kefka, or maybe he just straight up, straight up rushes a refresher orb. Either way, it is going to be Aftershock setting up for a smoke. They actually very smartly deward before they do so, but I mean, they don't really have to smoke. They could just go in for a straight mid lane push, but they are facing up against a Brewmaster who very quickly will have his blink, and he has a split, and there's also a BKB on Doom, and that can situationally just win the fight for Denial, assuming the initiation goes the way of Denial. Yeah, and although Doom, generally not the scariest of right clickers, does have that Alpha Wolf aura, and that'll mean that he's doing a not insignificant amount of damage inside of team fights that is physical so even though they are with the workings of a pipe on the death prophet they can still bring her down they are going to blink forward they get a bolt off onto mind control doesn't do that much now an arrow is going to fly through actually lands into cryo j that hitbox was a little bit janky but i don't think they're going to be able to kill him scratch that scarf mage mystic flare going to do in that poor ogre ultimate coming out from the zeus as well as from the titan but the titan to ravage doesn't really hit anything they're going to be able to get vision on mind control and doom up before any exorcism comes out but he'll survive through this doom and will be forced back to base although only just brewmaster back into his normal form is in the front lines will blink away as an arrow lands into draw again they're going to blink forward gush as well as snowball onto him and they're going to be able to bring down the Zeus and a two for zero trade and what could have been disastrous for Aftershock they also get a tier one tower on top of it nothing but wins and mind control didn't even use exorcism for that he didn't have a chance he was doomed the entire time so just like that they take the tower and then they're gonna pop the DP ultimate and try to go for Roshan denial because they don't have doom they don't have thunder gods wrath hell they don't even have an ice blast to throw right now it is going to be Roshan very quickly claimed by Aftershock not the most minus armor from Kefka but a level 2 Death Prophet ultimate will be able to shred the Roshan and Crow J in the area. He will get vision of this, but I don't really think that's going to be enough. So a huge win for Aftershock over in the mid lane. And the difference between this fight and the last time they were in the mid lane were arrows landing from the Mirana. And those were not set up at all. Those were just randomly thrown out arrows and worked out so very well for her. She's now packing a Demon Edge. This is not the uh, most common item build up we see from the Mirana, but if you if you want right click damage, then I guess you might as well go for a Demon Edge build. Roshan is going to be dropped, and Mind Control now has a double life. In a minute and a half, the pushing might just continue for Aftershock. Tusk wouldn't have died if he um, got hit by that Ancient Apparition Blast, but Magoma is going to survive, but the Zeus ulti will end his life. Spoke a little too soon, friend. He is going to die. You know what they say about running from heaven. You can't do it, guys. You can't do it. And, uh, I mean, it's not really a huge deal. He's a support. He is going to die pretty much anyway, but still it's rather unfortunate to kind of forget about the fact that you're going up against Zeus and then end up paying the price like that. I mean, I forgot about it too, and they probably could have used that to scout out the Roshan. It would have made a difference either way. Zeus now has a Yule Scepter on top of his uh, Blink Dagger, a little bit of extra movement speed for him, and some nice utility for the team. Eyes Blast up top, going to land into Jalopy. It is going to be a straight Monkey King bar for the Mirana. Up against the Brewmaster, it's a nice item choice for him to avoid Drunken Haze as well as just clicking onto the Brewmaster himself. 
Um, so I can respect this under normal circumstances when you'd see a demon at Jim Raw, I'd like to see a Daedalus, but I think this is one of those exceptions. Yeah, it's going to be a nice pickup regardless. Any plus damage you can get is pretty good, and the earlier you get a, a Monkey King bar is better if you get it earlier, so it is going to be a very fast one at that. Her attack speed is not going to be that impressive, but uh, it's a Marana. She'll be able to get attack speed through a Yasha Manta style or Butterfly or something along those lines. It really depends on what she wants later on. Probably Manta style over Butterfly, as Butterfly value is kind of thin in this game, but either way, item being picked up on Marana, not just yet completed, but she'll have that eventually, and in the meantime, they're going to go for the top lane push. Mind Control with a double life and exorcism. It's always possible that she gets doomed and is able to contribute nothing and has to just run away with that Aegis, but outside of that happening, I see Mind Control doing a crap ton of damage in this fight. Now with the pipe completed, is going to, for the most part, nullify Zeus, or nullify a great damage of the Zeus. So they're going to pop the exorcism and denial. They don't have any way of dragging the creep wave off of this tower. They have Funzi in the back lines, ready and waiting with a blink clap split. But Zeroji is perfectly positioned for this, and so is Magoma, and so is Kefka. So, mind control in the front lines, starting off with a no Kefka Ravage completely whiffed. Now the Doom is going to jump forward with the BKB. They have Vision right now, and Paris looking for a Doom target. It's going to be Zeroji. They're going to get hit with the Ice Blast. That's going to be lethal on the Aegis, and Zeroji is also going to shatter from this. They have to defend their Death Prophet, though. She does not have her ultimate. She's going to just try to run away as Magoma does TP out. Mind control is still in a lot of trouble. Lands a two man silence, but the huge crits from Paris is going to be sticking with mind control. He's going to try to bottle up in between this Kefka with an Anchor Smash is going to do literally nothing except for Blink Away, Try TV, but Bolt or Yule Scepter. Either way, it is going to be dropping the Tide Hunter. He's all alone. He's going to be dropping an Aftershock. They completely mess up their Ravage right there. I have no idea what happened from the Tide, but it hit zero people. I think it was cancelled by Zeus's passive, but I could be completely wrong, and maybe he just didn't blink before casting it. It's a crucial mistake for them, to say the least, and I don't know. It's going to mean that Aftershock, even though they have a double life on their Death Prophet, it actually didn't matter since they weren't able to fight with their Tidehunter. Without that Ravage, he's pretty much not a hero. Yeah, so Denial kind of getting a freebie in that one. They still hold on to their tower as well. I don't think the tower is going to be that long for life, but in the meantime, Aftershock can farm up this MKB from the Marana. So even though they may whiff a Ravage here or there, Jalopy will, at the very least, be able to contribute some physical damage, and he pretty much has all the physical damage in the game, with the exception of Doom with the Aura, who was critting for a good deal of damage. He's mostly going to be uh, tanky more than a damage dealer, so Jalopy's going to have a monopoly on that as far as that is concerned, and Aftershock, once they have their ultimates back up again, maybe they could try to go for a very similar play, but they just have to sequence their skills a little bit better. Is that, that just wasn't good enough, and all top lane Zoroji, he's dropping dangerously low to this Frost Blast, and even has Illusions chasing him down, fucking Mad's gonna get the kill because of these random Brewmaster Illusions doing just enough to drop the Scarath Mage to below lethal. Yeah, usual Illusions aren't very threatening, but these Illusions have the extra crit effect, and that means that they do a not insignificant amount of damage, and since they're melee Illusions, they also take a lot more beating uh, than normal heroes, so Magoma is also going to be forced back to base, although he doesn't have to. Um, it's going to be really annoying nonetheless, and sniping Skyrath Mage is what this team does very well with the Zeus Ultimate as well as AA Blast. If you connect with both of those spells, that's almost Skyrath dead immediately, and just any damage on top of it will finish him off. I didn't notice this before, but AA actually does have the Aghanim Scepter completed with the Hand of Midas 24 minutes into the game. That's actually pretty quick for fucking Mad right now, so I mean, having that up against... Well, having that in general is going to be very nice, but having that with the Zeus Ultimate as well... Oh man, that has potential to be just absolutely ridiculous, and well, we saw it for the first time on the Scarath Mage, I'm sure we'll see, be seeing that a little bit more down the line, but for right now, it's Afterlife, or Aftershock, rather. Uh, they have a smoke up on everyone, and they're going to be going deep into the enemy jungle, finding some revenge on this poor poor ancient apparition, blink forward for a gush, concussive, and that's the death of the apparition. Is there any response from Denial? It looks like there is not going to be. However, Joral is here with an Invis rune. Blink forward from Funzi is going to land onto Kefka. They are all spotted now due to Thunder God's Wrath. Zeus is going to quickly bring down the Tide Hunter. Now going to go towards Mind Control, who is now doomed. He is still invisible, however. I think he might be able to get away. He's very, very fast. And Arrow's going to land on Zeus, slow him down even further. The Death Prophet looking to survive right now with the pipe man uh pipe protection. She will be fine. Has to teleport out though. And it looks like my control is going to live. Yes, albeit barely. It's going to be a one-for-one one in the end as Tidehunter was picked off in that engagement. But uh, 
overall, I mean, it's pretty good for Denial. Losing your Ancient Apparition is usually pretty fine, and that looked like it was just going to be a free kill for Aftershock. Yeah, they do have to commit the Thunder God's Wrath, the Brewmaster Ultimate, as well as the Doom spell in order to do it, but I think it still favors them. Ogre Magi, we really haven't felt much impact from Cryogy this game, and a lot of that's because Bloodlust really doesn't have much use, and the multicast haven't been coming out at crucial times, but if they do, um, that could be an extra bit of damage that Denial are working with. Still, <clears throat> the Brewmaster is struggling to pick up his items, but he has pretty much all that he needs for this portion of the game with the Vladimir's Aura, making that um, not needed um, for Paris to pick up for himself. We might see a fight in mid. Exorcism's already popped and doing quite a number to this tier 2 tower. Drop below half now, jump in for a Ravage, lands into Drawl as well as Paris. We'll bring down Drawl first, and he can't get any damage out in this fight, and Paris is brought down even in the BKB by the Exorcism. Jalopy's going to jump up to the high ground looking for Funzie, but Funzie's over in the trees and they don't seem to care. It's going to be the tier two tower, the prize for this push. Mind control is going to be tagged by an HF version ice boss, which is surely annoying. That wears off and he won't be able to get any heal from that, but now Aftershock are going to be able to put a little bit of damage in this tier three tower. They will not be able to bring it down. Denial, just have to wait 30 seconds and occasionally poking with arc lightning or something will bring this tower into survivable range. But that was pretty much the ideal initiation from Aftershock. They landed an arrow on the Zeus at the exact same time they landed a Ravage. So the layered stuns a little bit as far as that is concerned. But hey, they brought down the Zeus and that was the prize, as you said. Uh, Doom also popping the BKB there, which actually didn't do anything. So Denial, after a pretty serious loss, they're going to take a little bit of chip damage on their tier 3 tower, but now they're back with the splits and the Zeus is back alive as well. It's got to be a clean retreat for Aftershock and it looks like they will make it out safe and sound, but I mean they go pretty far into the enemy base without committing that much of anything. Zoroji, he's really got to be in trouble whenever the Thunder God's Wrath does fire off and well, Scarath Mage, he's going to try to grab a bounty rune. He grabs it and then another one responds and he's like, oh shit, another bounty rune, might as well take that. But then he gets jumped by Brew and Zeus, and that's uh, just kind of unfortunate to see from the Scarath Mage. So it's going to be a nice pickoff for Denial, but uh, they have to really be careful. Is if they do get caught with those arrows, then openings are certainly going to be there. Yeah. Tier 1 tower in mid is going to be the next target for Denial to push down. They should be able to do it, even though they don't have the greatest of pushing lineups. They had plenty to take down a 400 HP tier 1, and Aftershock, they don't seem to be interested in defending this, although they will glyph it, that's only to delay the inevitable. Titan without any Ravage, and with no Exorcism available for Death Prophet, it's going to be a clean tower push for Denial. I don't expect them to go for any more after this, although they might try for it. Ron is pushing out the top lane and can TP at a moment's notice. They do still have the split, they'll have the Thunder God's Wrath back soon in 30 seconds, so Denial, if they really want to go for this, then they can, but... Going for a smoke gank, I think, is probably the smarter decision. Unfortunately for them, uh, they don't know this. There's no one down here, so they're not going to find anyone. But Roshan's going to be responding in 30 seconds. And it's actually pretty lucky for Denial to take the tower right before Roshan is going to be respawning. Aftershock, though, they do have everything up online. So should they know that Roshan is going to be the objective for Denial, they will be able to crash it pretty heavily. In the meantime, Marana also takes down a tier 2 tower up on the top lane. Jalopi is going to re rejoin with the rest of her team. Now it's going to be Aftershock's turn to smoke up with Magoma leading the way. Has a Blink Dagger, has Ice Shards, has Snowball ready and waiting. And they see Funzie. The Thunder God's Wrath, though, is going to show them all. I believe that's how it works versus Smoke. And yeah, Funzie's definitely going to know something's happening. But Doom walks right into a Yule Scepter. He does have a BKB and he will pop it immediately. Ravage going to be connecting only to Cryo J. However, a pretty bad Ravage. And Jalopy going to be doomed off in the sidelines. It's going to be chased down. They do bring down the Ogre, but it's at the cost of their Marana. Cannot save her in time. Snowball onto two, though, is going to be doing some pretty nice stunning action. Now Paris sitting right next to the Exorcism is going to be taking a lot of damage as well. Kefka going to block his way with an Anchor Smash to boot. That's going to be a two for one so far and it looks like everyone else from denial will be able to get out alive aftershock even after a very terrible ravage they come out ahead yeah but only just i don't think they're going to be able to get any towers off of that so i think denial are going to be okay with losing that fight or as okay as you can be when you lose your safe lane farmer although aftershock will be able to put a little bit more chip damage in the tier 3 tower and eventually it is going to fall but still, they shouldn't be able to take it this way, especially with no exorcism going. If the fight was close to this tower, maybe. Um, but yeah, it should be pulled off by Cryoj. They're going to jump in with Funzi, in fact, and now he has a split available. Mind Control is going to be throwing the snowball. Now they go into Funzi with the Walrus Punch as well. Silence Up can't get off the split, and he's going to fall before he's able to cast that spell. And now, Aftershock are in a lot better position than they were previously. 
Yeah, 45 seconds where they know that they're going to have a numbers advantage. However, it looks like they're going to fall back because it's Moran on the bottom lane. Just respawned is going to be pushing that one out. So they don't have their full strength, although neither do Denial. It's going to be Aftershock playing this a little bit more cautiously. Regardless, it's still like the power of the silences from Aftershock. And Brewmaster so far, I mean, he's gotten a couple splits off, but he's certainly not had the contribution that you would expect from a Brewmaster to usually make in these types of scenarios just because he has been shut down every single time. Uh, Denial, what do they have going for them? They still have a massive amount of damage coming out from the Zeus. His ultimate is almost Aghanimed. Doom still has his ultimate. Now Shiva's guard, very difficult to actually kill off. But scaling damage from Denial isn't quite there. They're pretty much 100% reliant on their ultimates, just like last game. Yeah, and I think Aftershock are going to be able to work around that. Even though for the most part their damage doesn't scale that well, except for Miranda's damage, um, it still is looking pretty good for them. And I don't know, Aftershock, again, seeming to come out on top. Doom has a truckload of net worth. Since he does have Midas as well as Devour running, that's kind of to be expected coming out from Paris. But even though he has a lot of items, it still doesn't feel like it's going to be enough to completely lock down <clears throat> Aftershock. It would be wonderful for them to have a refresher for the Doom, and I think that'll be his next choice. Maybe he goes for the Akinims first, but even so, they'll be reliant on the cooldown for a refresher then. And now with the heart on the Death Prophet, it's no guarantee they'll be able to kill Mind Control off inside the Doom. Yeah, the best thing that they could hope for is Silencer, so she can't use her ultimate, and then work with the damage advantage that you have from that in order to take a fight, because she has a heart, she previously had a pipe, so even if you did doom her, it wasn't going to be lethal. You had to dump a whole bunch of damage into her following, but like the Thunder God's Wrath, the Ice Blast, these are all great skills to land on a Death Prophet for sure, but all of that is reduced from uh, by pipe, and it's all also going to be pseudo-reduced by the Yule Scepter, especially that Ice Blast. So my control is incredibly tanky, and she's doing a crap ton of damage, as Death Prophets usually do. They're going to be on the chase. It's going to be Funzy to blow the smoke. Yule Scepter not quite there, and Funzy has a clean escape opportunity. However, there are a couple more heroes here for the Denial side. They're actually going to know, get Mind Control jump, but he's going to get put into the Snowball very quickly. Thunder God's Wrath is going to be dropped. It's going to be Zoroji to take most of the heat right now. Mind Control is going to pop right back out of that Snowball. Kefka off to the side, looking for a Ravage opportunity, but he's not going to find it. Already the Skyrath Mage is down. Mind Control and Magoma off to the side, just find, trying to buy a little bit more space. As Mind Control finally gets the ultimate off. Kefka just being zoned out by just the Zeus, and it's Mind Control fighting one versus four. He's going to very much so struggle to take this fight, but he's actually doing a decent job right now with the Magic Stick charges, and now he has support from Jalopi. Killed off Zeus after having his tide under brought down jalopy and the death prophet are going to do quite a bit of damage down to fucking mad they're going to be zoned away by the zeus jalopy forced to leap out but it's going to be a blink four from the zeus to take him down and aftershock they take a massive failure of a fight mostly because the zeus was single-handedly keeping out the tide hunter yes he does give his life for that but man aftershock they get initiated upon and they absolutely get crushed not only did he Keep the Titan out of the fight. He actually forces out the Ravage, which was the only reason why Zeus dies. He gets tagged by the Ravage into Arrow, which pretty much everybody in Denial is going to fall oh for. And Zeus, he just got so much damage out. Everybody on Aftershock was already starting with pretty low amounts of HP. And now after that, it's going to be a Roshan attempt. Just Paris and Funzi inside the pit for now. But that's really all that they need. With the Vlad's War, they can sustain as well as just the constant attack speed slows from the Shivas as well as from the Thunderclap. Roshan is attacking so slowly, and he's doing a pretty good amount of damage to Funzi, to be fair, but he's regaining just as much as he's losing. Now a double life on the Doom. At this point, Doom certainly does not have enough threat to make focusing him worthwhile, so for Aftershock, Doom is going to be rather low on the list of priorities, so Doom is going to have to need to pick up something that is a little bit more smashy if he wants to truly be of use to his team. As now with a double life, it's like there's no reason at all for Aftershock to put anything into that doom since he's not going to die in the first place and even if he does somehow die it's not going to be for very long so an assault crash or something like that for doom is going to be a huge pickup for him and with the amount of gold that he has it certainly looks like a viable item and well in general just assault crash and denial will be fantastic against the physical damage of death prophet and marana so you might as well go for that item someone should on denial yeah nice I think Doom's probably the best one to get it. Although Brewmaster is a close second, he's going to be working towards a Black King bar. Rana pushing out top by herself. Can't accomplish much, and Jalopy, although he did a decent amount of damage in the last fight, still isn't carrying the game entirely. And Even though Doom's not very scary as far as right-click carries are concerned, Rana's one of the least scary ones that can even be clumped into that category. 
And with just one damage item, it's not enough to really pull her team through unless they get a good initiation, which is important for them. And the ravages this game have been very underwhelming from the Tidehunter. She picked up the Monkey King bar at about 20 minutes, if I recall correctly. BKB to follow up is not terrible farm, but definitely they need a little bit more. They're going to Moonlight Shadow right under an Observer Ward from Denial, and then they're also going to walk past the Sentry. So Den Denial, they're going to smoke up, but it's very quickly going to be revealed. Death Prophet will throw himself into the air, might get the Exorcism off. No, she's going to get doomed, and Multicast Mind Control being focused now, but now into the Snowball she goes. Going to charge forward for Cryo and the Death and the Ancient Apparition both with the Ravage landing on pretty much all of the Mind Control. Not doing any damage in this fight, but it looks like they don't even need her to do so. It's still Mirana doing most of the damage with Magoma tanking quite a few hits here and there, but now Mind Control is going to have enough time to pop off the Exorcism, and now is going to try to go one versus three. She's going to need a little bit more space, however, as Paris and Funzi doing quite a bit of damage. In the meantime, Jiral dueling up against everyone in the back end is not going to quite do enough as Mind Control is grinding down the Zeus. Now that the Mirana back into the fight wants to go for Jiral, and Paris is going to respond as well. But everyone else from Aftershock, they're going to try to make a retreat. Ancient Apparition buying back for this fight, but everyone else from Aftershock, they're just going to book it, and it looks like they are going to make it out alive. That was a 2 for 3 with a forced buyback. It's still a beneficial fight from Aftershock, even though they open things up with a Doom onto the Death Prophet. It was just good enough for them. Jalopi might actually go down here. He's going to turn around, try to fight Jiral. That seems pretty ambitious, as Jiral will be able to stick on him pretty tightly, although teleport out. Jiral needs one more bolt. He's not going to land it, barely getting out with the Mirana. And now Kefka with the Gush and the Beatdown is going to kill off that Zeus. Now going to try to duel up against Paris. Battle of Tanks for sure, but here comes Mind Control. Going to force the Doom back so that Kefka does have a safe TP out of there. And it's ultimately going to be a 4 for 2 at the end with, an, again, a forced buyback from the Ancient Apparition. Aftershock, it was certainly a messy fight, but hey, it was a lot better than the last one, and they're going to be pretty happy with the result. Yeah, and now we do have that Smashery item coming out from Pharaoh's Sea. It now has the Refresher Orb, and although it's not paired with the Agnum Scepter yet, I'd love to see that as his next choice, but Double Doom is incredibly hard to deal with inside the team fights, and it does give him a little bit of damage with the extra attack speed, but that's pretty much negligible. It's just going to make sure that even though that fight went decently well for Aftershock since they're able to wait out 15 seconds for one Doom, that's almost impossible to do with two. Even if your physical damage is limited, as long as Zeus is surviving, that doesn't really matter. Yeah, Zeus is doing so much damage in these fights, mostly because Aftershock aren't going for him. Like The best fights that Aftershock have had were ones where they isolated Zeus with an arrow and then chain stunned him and then quickly brought him down. But so far that hasn't been happening. He's been throwing out lightning relatively freely. It is due in large part because he has a Doom and a Brewmaster on his team, two really just big heroes. Like They're tanky, but also just physically they're big. They take up a lot of space on the screen and they're really imposing. So Aftershock, they have their hands full with those strength heroes and Zeus is quietly in the background, a short dwarf guy just throwing out lightning left and right and he's doing a crap ton of damage because of it. So Zeus, as long as he keeps his positioning, should be just fine to do even more damage. Aghanim Scepter completed should be a refresher, I think, for Zeus. Although I think this game, a Veil won't be terrible either. Zeus is going to be scaling pretty decently moving forward, as long as he is running around without being stunned or silenced. And so far, that's been the case. Yeah, I would have loved to suggest Ogre to build a Veil or one of the other supports, but Ancient Apparition has his eyes set on larger things in the scythe, and Ogre is dirt poor. Currently, we have his Moonlight Shadow being used by Aftershock, and they found CryoJ. He's not getting any gold, even though he wanted to. Walrus Punch to open up into the arrow. Not even needed. They have the damage anyway, and CryoJ is going to die. I feel like every time it's the Ogre Magi this game, he's just been on the receiving end of one too many ganks. It's like, oh, no matter what trade it happens, Ogre Magi always is going to be the one to fall. And he has Boots and Soul Ring, and it's 40 minutes into the game. This Ogre Magi is broke. He really needs government aid or something. And, well, I don't know if he's going to have the chance because the rest of his team has their hands full with this Aftershock push. Exorcism actually not going to use it. Jolpy's going to take the Doom first and foremost. Ravage going to connect onto literally nobody. Now the secondary Doom onto Mind Control. They're going to put the Mirana in the Snowball for a little bit more time, but Mind Control already has the Exorcism working and it's doing quite a bit of damage. The Boulder Toss onto Jalopy will kill him off the Doom, helping out in that, making it lethal. Mind Control still with the Exorcism is all focusing onto Paris, but that's not the hero you want to be focusing. Now Mind Control, blinking forward from the Brewmaster, is still doing quite a bit and will try to TP out from this, but will get Yule Scepter up. Needs his Exorcism to return, but it's not going to happen. She gets bolted down and killed off. That's a 4 for 0 in favor of Denial. The initiation from the Refresher Orb Doom was huge that fight. Taking out both the Mirana and Death Prophet more or less in that engagement was crazy for Paris to do for Denial and 
keeps them pretty much inside this game and gives them a very convincing team fight win. Even though Death Prophet gets off the um, exorcism, she couldn't use it to its fullest potential with the Doom on top of her. And that's going to be a very good fight for Denial. And now it's their turn to take some structures away from Aftershock. The Tier 2 Tower mid first before they're able to go into anything else. And although this in itself isn't the most of significant pushes and they won't be able to go high ground, they can do that every time they have the double Doom available. And now with 4,000 gold on the Doom, Paris is just going to get even scarier. And Aftershock, they just need something else to withstand that. I mean, Death Prophet has a heart and a pipe, yet she still was hit very hard by that. Mirana is not really going to want to build up HP, but she kind of has to, unless she has BKB before she gets doomed, and that's very hard to do, because you have to be kind of expecting the blink in, and then if Doom sees it, he could just not blink in, and then you're in a really awkward position where you're magic immune, but no fight is happening, so Jalopy is going to have to play his distances very, very carefully. It looked like they were going to have a very simple, straightforward, high ground push with Exorcism and maybe a fight following thereafter, but that's only going to lure Jalopy into a false sense of security where he's not ready to jam that BKB button, and if he doesn't have that, then he's just going to get ground to bits. Even with the additional time bought by the Snowball, it just wasn't enough in that last fight. Still the score tied 22 to 22, and Denial now with a pretty slight lead. 10k experience, 7500 gold is pretty good, but it's by no means game winning. This game is still in anyone's hands right now and Doom, well after that last fight, he finds himself an Aghanim Scepter. This guy is absolutely terrifying. Yeah, and I love Aghanim Scepter on Doom. I liked it before they took away the disabling of passives and threw that onto the Ag's ability for him, and now I think it's almost mandatory. It feels so strong. In that last team fight, Death Prophet was able to kind of outlast the Doom slightly, but that's not going to happen ever again, as Doom is unlikely to die inside these team fights, and even if he does, his damage is going to be dealt one way or another, and that double Doom is pretty much going to delete two heroes off of Aftershock's side, and really, if they oh. take out... What? Kefka just popped a BKB. Well, that just happened. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, continue. Doom about Doom killing people is what you were saying. <laughs> I completely lost my train of thought, and Ultimate from the Zeus is going to scout out everybody from Aftershock, and yeah, that's pretty right. much going to be it. That BKB usage by Titander is actually very impactful, though. Alright, well, sorry for breaking your train, but uh, yeah, either way, Doom is going to be a large force moving forward, and well, Titander with one fewer second in order to, or one less second? I don't know. Uh, what, minus one second in order to deal with that Doom is going to be pretty unhappy about that. I honestly don't even know what he was trying to cast there, but ultimately fat fingered it and hit the wrong button. So Tidehunter really does need that BKB if he wants to get the Ravage off, but BKB doesn't even protect you against the Doom. So it's mostly anti-Zeus tool, anti-Ancient Apparition tool, which is certainly going to be useful for Kefka. But honestly, even if he drops his BKB down to five seconds, your ability to jump in and Ravage is not going to be too hindered by the fact that you have, you know, the difference between 5 and 10 seconds. Not a big deal, or it shouldn't be a big deal for him. Yeah, and it's still going to be 8 seconds, and now it's off of cooldown again, so that misclick from Kefka is going to go unpunished, or more or less unpunished by Denial. And, well, Ancient Apparition Ice Blast lands onto some heroes, although they don't see it. I don't think they scouted out the smoke either, although they might be privy to this fact. Let's see. Zeus Ultimate cooling down in 10. They won't be able to get this one off, and it looks like Aftershock might be able to find a jump onto the enemy side of the map. Although, for now, they are just chilling, and they're going to decide instead to angle towards the Roshan pit. It's a decent Rosh, but now they know they're smoked. It's completely given up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the uh, tracker part of the Ancient Apparition ult did see them before they went to this before they went into the smoke so either way denial knew what was going on and now they definitely know what's going on moonlight shadow is going to be used so maybe now denial are going to be surprised it's going to be doomed to see everything first there was a gem pickup on someone who is actually holding it right now it's going to be uh, just the tusk right now but De exorcism has already been used and roshan is going to take quite a bit of damage once he's going to get silenced and immediately annihilated here comes paris however looking for a doom is not going to catch it onto jalopy he does leap out of there now paris still holding it is going to try to get out but it's going to be zoroji to take one of the dooms first of all now the second doom finally onto jalopy but still the exorcism from mind control is going to town everyone buy back from the skyroth mage he's going to very quickly try to rejoin this fight but denial so far i've taken a one for one trade but both of their dooms are down this is the time for Aftershock to fight, but I don't know if they can or really want to. 
They will lose their ancient effort, or, um, excuse me, Jalopy over in the sidelines. The Death Prophet's able to snipe her out. Um, so it's not all terrible for Denial, but yeah, both of their team targets died, but that's all that happened inside that team fight, mostly because Brewmaster just got caught unawares over by the Roshan pit. He casually walks into it. Now we're looking for another engage on the Cryo J. Silence up, Mystic Flare. That's going to be the Ogre down to start this fight off. Walrus Punch on the sidelines. It's going to be catching out Effing Mad. Now Effing Mad is going to die. He's caught between one too many enemy heroes. Midas is before he falls, but he will fall in the end. And since he previously bought back i don't think he has it available he does have it available but he's down for 90 seconds and the roshan was previously roughed up quite badly by mind controls exorcism is going to be very quickly completed however off to the sidelines can be Zeroji trying to duel up against both Zo doom and zeus not a good combo to be fighting up against kefka is going to pop the bkb but he's going to get chopped to bits by the doom polar punch going to get him a little bit more safety now the snowball dodging the rock actually pretty well done but it's still not going to be everyone's safety kefka going to teleport out of there Magoma left behind by the Death Prophet is going to be brought down. The Roshan is still alive, and this time I think Denial have enough to take it. However, they're still going to be fighting up against this Death Prophet. It's only her and the Tidehunter available, and Tidehunter is all the way back in base. Denial, after they're all said and done, are going to crash this Roshan pit, and they are going to secure Aegis and Cheese unless... Mind Control really wants to go in versus this. No, Aegis is now going to be claimed. Mind Control hit with nothing yet, yet because the Yule Scepter Moonlight Shadow is there. Mind Control going to throw the Ogre Magi up into there, but gets doomed for trouble. Slow down by Funzi's Clap, and Mind Control is very slowly going to get beaten down. Here comes the Marauder. will land an arrow onto Jorah, but it's not going to be enough to fully engage upon it because she's all alone. Has Tidehunter to the south, but that's certainly not going to be it either. Denial, they walk away with Aegis Cheese. And now that Death Prophet's down for a minute, they're going to try to force out a buyback, and it might just be successful. Yeah. Paris is going to be without one Doom for 50 seconds and double Doom for 70, but still Denial are going to be fighting up against an Aftershock without a Death Prophet unless they buy back, and I think they're going to have to. There's no real other option. Boots of Travel purchased up by Paris. He's completely six slotted, although he might consider replacing some of his items for something a little bit more hard hitting. Maybe get rid of that BKB for an Abyssal, but it's just keeping him so safe. Jump in instead from the Zeus, doing so much damage. Blowing up the Marana. Marana buys back. Death Prophet buys back. And it's now it's now it's time for Denial to get out of your snowball chasing after Paris. But it's Blink away from the Tusk. They're going to get a nice Ravage off of Kafka. The arrow flies through and they're going to be able to kill off Cryoj. Paris still fighting for all he's worth. Eating a lot of Exorcism damage. Now his BKB is down. He's trying to kill off Kafka and will be able to do so. It's a triple kill for him, but not before he falls down. Does have a buyback available. And now wants to get back into this fight. As the Aegis is now spent on the sidelines. Zeus is now without his life. As the Ancient Apparition of Ice Blast doesn't land on the Mayan He's now cold feeded, making sure that that doesn't proc. Walking towards the left, he's now going to chase after the poor ancient apparition with the exorcism running. It's not going to have to kill off Effing Mad immediately, but now Effing Mad walks closer. My control's ultimate's going to wear off, healing him very heavily. It's now Funzy in the middle of too many enemy heroes. Really Crypt Storm as well as. <clears throat> A couple of auto attacks, and that's going to be a Doom surviving, but he's alone. He needs to make sure not to die here, as it could be disastrous. He does have a double Doom, however, so if they chase too deeply, they could be in a lot of trouble. Arrow coming out from the run and not going to land onto anything. It's effing Madden Paris make their way back towards their side of the map. Man, that was a beautiful Ravage from Kefka, and we've been seeing okay Ravages from, from him the entire time, but that one was amazing. It hit onto pretty much everyone there was to hit, and all the while, the Death Prophet ultimate was going to work. The Marana was also hitting pretty hard within all of that, and Denial, they end up using the Aegis, and they actually take a lost fight, so can't really expect that to happen all the time. Tidehunter, once again, using a BKB randomly. I assume he saw the, uh, the Ice Blast coming in, but no, that was kind of a weird situation uh, regardless denial still end up losing that fight and i mean i don't believe doom had the chance to get a doom off or let alone two so denial were not fighting at full strength there but either way the doom was forced to buy back it's not really a huge deal because he has so much gold he you know can afford to buy back once or twice and it won't really affect his tax bracket that much but still he's in a dangerous situation jump forward from Paris is going to catch eyes onto Mind Control. Hexed up and doomed. Mind Control is now going to die to dots, if not anything else. Yeah, he's going to shatter to the Doom and AA combo. And Death Prophet, she does not have a buyback because, well, it's going to be down for another five minutes. And now Denial, they should know about this, though they don't have a buyback on their Doom either. I think they should feel comfortable enough going in for a high ground push. As Paris will just wait for the natural Doom cooldown and then have another two without... Uh, actually, Death Prophet will be up by then, but... Still, he has an option of running with one Doom. Doesn't really need it. They have Sheepsticks galore and Yule Scepter's galore. They can go for this push. 
Yeah, we'll just have to see how it's going to work out for them. Drell now with the Veil on top of it is going to be so much damage into Aftershock, especially without that pipe on the Death Prophet. She's important not only for herself, but for everybody else in the team. Backdoor protection has been disabled, and now they're going to go into the Tier 3 tower. They pop an ultimate to find out where everybody in Aftershock is. They're all up in top, trying to push as fast as they can up in that top Tier 3. But Ancient Apparition and Brewmaster are there as the Doom Zeus and Ogre Magi clean up the Tier 3 tower, and now looking towards the melee barracks as well. They should be able to take that barracks and now TP's back from Aftershock. Melee barracks are fortified and they're standing for now as Blink Forward Snowball in from the Tusk, but he's alone. Nobody else in that Snowball looking for Walrus Punch. Maybe the Ravage comes out from the Titan to hits on the mostly BKP targets and really doesn't accomplish much. Magoma cut inside the Ice Blast is going to die to a level death now and Kefka fighting up against Paris. The first Doom not going to be thrown out yet. He does use the Refresher for a secondary BKB, but now that Murata is down to the ground, going to Doom her up. She's already up to the high ground. However, that's going to zone Jalopy out now the rundown from Doom going to make sure that that Doom effect remains on top of the Mirana. Slowed under the tower as well as that sigil being really annoying. It's still denial to take the first set of barracks. And now split for the Brewmaster. Boulder toss into Mind Control. Mind Control falling fast and will fall. You'll separate delay this. He has the BKB active during the same time. The right clicks. Will they be enough? Mind Control makes it back to the base. The uphill misses. It's going to be enough to save him. Slow is coming out from the Skyrath Mage. And Jalopy's trying to man fight as best he can. But they just can't do it. Denial are fighting inside the enemy. Well, it's working for them. 110 seconds with no Mirana. She's already bought back previously in this fight, and they can finish off the barracks in mid and swing down towards bottom if they really want to. What else is there for Aftershock to do? They can't do anything. They have Exorcism, and Death Prophet can, in theory, make a defense, but not up against this many heroes. They're going to try so desperately, Denial, to kill off that Death Prophet. They know she was tagged with the Ice Blast, but they will not be able to kill her off. Yule's up, they're going to buy her just enough time, but they're going to return right back into the enemy base. They know that Marana's down for 80, and if she had buyback, she would have used it by now. So they know that they're free and clear to do this. My control is going to poke away with Crypt Swarms. That's certainly not going to be enough, as Paris is going to jump straight in with the Shiva's Guard already active. Zeroji going to get chunked down really hard. BKB is going to prevent that missile from doing anything. Now Magoma shattering due to all the magic damage. My control is once again going to get cheaped up. He's still very close to his bound. Maybe this time he can make it out. He has the Exorcism running as well, but it's not doing nearly enough. Paris going down everyone. Here comes Kefka with a little bit of Anchor Smash for the additional health. Bucky Mad dropping pretty low, but he will be able to blink out of there just fine. Kefka and Death Prophet all alone trying to do this just by themselves. But here comes a massive creep wave with four catapults. How the hell did that happen? Denial, they are going to take the tier three tower, but they're kind of roughed up right now. They still can push. They're going to jump forward for a doom onto Kefka. This Tidehunter is now in lethal range with a multicast. He will be brought down. Here comes Dural as well as the Ice Blast. Mind Control is going to walk squarely into that one. No, he will dodge it, but he will still get the chilling effect applied to him. Paris in the meantime, focusing the range back to this Cryo and Dural trying to kill off Mind Control. Going to be a tough fight for sure. It's fucking mad. Just trying to be bait right now. Gets the hex onto Mind Control, though. Does trade his life for it. It's most certainly going to be worth it because now Death Prophet is down without buyback. And now Denial have just won the game as there are no buybacks from Aftershock. Mirana, Tusk, Skyrath Mage will be back soon enough, but this is versus four enemy Denial heroes. Actually, no, they haven't won the game quite yet as they can't go for top lane Mega Creeps. It is still a chance for Aftershock, however slight it may be. Magoma is going to get start opened up with a Lightning Bolt. He is going to put himself into the Snowball. He's going to put everyone else into the Snowball as well, which will actually fizzle. I don't really know what happened there, but either way, Paris right into the middle of things with BKB once again. He's going to quickly make quick work out of the Tusk. Now going to go for Jalopy and Zoroji at the same time. The Ancient is being destroyed. I don't know if Mirana and Skyrath Mage have enough to do it. They certainly don't because they're going to tap out right now. Jalopy and Zoroji are going to survive, but their Ancient is not in denial. Tie up the series. This is one of the longest best of twos I've ever been involved in in cast, but it is going to be over. And now into my and Sandy versus Denial, we're going to go. This series is 1-1 as quite a few best of twos end up in that um, fashion. We are going to see GG well played from both sides, and honestly, it could have gone either way. There was times when denial...